U.S. City Planning and Zoning Commission. And the first item is meeting call to order, which we've done. Announcements? Any announcements? There are. Um, so thank you, Vice Chair and Commissioners. Um, you all should have an invitation for April 22nd for a workshop prior to our meeting. Um, it's for to talk through some density um, information that we've come up with. Doug's done a great job of putting some charts together to show us how the density in each of the zones works with our comp plan. So he's going to go through that. And then we have been working for the last month to make, last month, last year, but really hard for the last month, um, to do some code revisions. So this workshop is to kind of walk you guys through those code revisions so you understand what will be coming ahead to a public hearing. So That's on the 22nd. That's on April 22nd. And that's all I've got for that part. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Yes, Miss. Just yes, Mr. Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Jeff, I just um, maybe it would be a good idea, just a suggestion to uh, put on the record that we do have a quorum and that Michelle is online and we have four members present because we're really thin tonight. I don't know. Well, you just did it. So what's oh, the point? Well, there we go. <laughs> so be it. It's been announced. <laughs> Okay, uh, so then the we have no council action. No. Yes, I got that covered too because oh. <laughs> I don't think Randy's on. So okay, so just a little bit of an update on uh, what happened at City Council on March fifteenth. It was a long night. Um, if you recall, Middlebury subdivision was one hundred and five acres out on Orchard Avenue that was doing a rezone to remove the PUD from their project to just make it a straight RS6 subdivision. Um, City Council approved the rezone to remove the PUD and they continued the public hearing to a April 19th. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get the calendar in my hand. To April 19th um, to give them a chance to revise their concept in the development agreement to add a little bit more open space City Council thought it was important to have a, um, a larger um, kind of gathering place for, for a project that was that large. So they just asked them to come back with another option. Um, what we've discussed with them up to this point doesn't sound like it's going to alter the pre-plat enough to have to bring it back to you. Um, our code does allow for um, a certain amount of change for it to continue to be compliant with what was approved. So I think just adding open space and losing a few lots here and there isn't going to be enough to bring it back before you again. But um, should the DA get approved, then it'll probably be slightly different than the pre-plat that you guys saw. Do you kind of keep your eyes on that to make sure they're not pulling a fast one or something? You know, Not these people, but anybody. Absolutely. Okay. Yep, yep. I, I take it phase by phase and compare it and make sure that we're not adding lots or taking away lots and that they're still staying within their lot I, averages. I can sleep better at night now. I'm glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. Um, then the White Pines project, which was the apartment complex in the RP zone, you guys approved the CUP for the large apartment comp complex on 12th and Hawaii. Oh. And then they had a little piece kind of off to the east that was still zoned RD, and they were trying to incorporate that into the project. Um, City Council felt like what you had approved was sufficient, and they didn't need that extra piece, so they denied the rezone. Wow. Um, the Gross. same neighbor that was here um, came to City Council and spoke, so they asked the applicant to um, speak with the neighbors, kind of maybe work on what they wanted to see or what they might be more comfortable with and come back later with another uh, proposal. So they did give them the go ahead to possibly come back in the future, but they did deny it. That so it was denied, the whole property was denied? The no. Whole, oh, just that little, just the reason. where the ambulance garage was? No, to, it's on the northeast okay. corner on Hawaii. There was just a section, uh, one little piece of a block that needed to be rezoned from RD to RP to fit into the CUP that you guys right. approved. So the CUP that you guys approved still stands for the rest of the property. 
just not for that little piece. Okay. So the amortization still goes away. Yep. And so we'll just have them revise the legal description for the conditional use permit to just include the piece that's approved. But that would have to come here for the seat. Would that have to come back to planning and zoning then? <laughs> okay. Nope. What what you guys did is is good. It's good to go. Okay. Old star for everybody. <laughs> Um, and then the Broadstone Apartments, which you guys have seen a number of times before on Bird and uh, Colorado area over there by NNU. and um, You guys approved it for the rezone. They denied it um, because it was three stories and not two stories. And, you know, the neighbors came and, and had some things to say about it. So they denied it and uh, they want to see a different proposal for that property again. Because it is dirt for number of years yet to come yeah two story doesn't yeah pull out. yep <laughs> they're gonna yeah so we'll we'll see what happens maybe they'll they'll come back with something different or we'll see but anyway that's all that uh, i have for council Alrighty, thank you very much you're welcome um for the people that are sitting here are, are any of you here for the second meeting of the public hearings It's been canceled, but I'll mention it again so more people come in. Okay, so let's get started then on business item, action item. Minutes. Huh? Oh, the minutes, yes, excuse me, sorry. Thank you. Um, Make a motion, we approve the minutes. Thank you. Second. You second it? I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It, it, was, it was Christy that threw me off on that. She, she, she went ahead. Already up there, huh? Yeah, she was already up there, saving time. Okay, so now we we'll go to business item number one, uh, which is a subdivision plat final approval for Mallard Apartments in the RD zoning district at 2000 South Midland Boulevard into nine lots of nine fourplex buildings for a total of 36 dwelling units, average gross and net dwelling unit density of 11.55 on 3.1 acres. Or Tim Kelly representing Monty Baldwin. And Ms. Christie, I think you have this one too. I do. Thank you, Vice Chair and Commissioners. Um, the action requested from you this evening is approval or denial of the Mallard Apartments subdivision located on the southeast corner of West Maryland and South Midland. It is located in the city limits and is zoned RD. It's bordered on the north by RS4 single family lots on the west by RS7 zone properties in the Sands Point subdivision and on the south and east by Canyon County residential properties. The property was annexed and zoned RD in September of 2020 and the preliminary plat was approved in November of 2020. As noted, the development proposes nine residential lots. These lots contain fourplexes as allowed in the RD zone on 3.11 acres. So the findings in this case are that the, the property is located within the city limits and is zoned RD, which is appropriate for the fourplexes. It conforms to the appro approved preliminary plat layout and it conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards for NAMPA. Staff feels that it is appropriate for the commission to recommend approval of the final plat for Mallet Apartments to city council with the conditions as listed in the staff report and any other you see fit to impose. I will stand for any questions. No questions. All right, let me go back to it. Anybody like to a motion. I only have a choice of two. Two? Approve or deny? Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> thought that was a trick question. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Chair, I'll make a motion that we move to recommend approval of the final plat for the Mallard, Mallard Apartment Subdivision <clears throat> comprising 3.116 acres uh, into nine buildable lots located at 2000 South Midland Boulevard, 
which is on the southeast corner of West Maryland Avenue and South Midland. For the applicant, Tim Kelly, with all conditions of staff and uh, conclusions of the law. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, are we getting? We need to get Michelle in here since there's only three of us. Okay, Michelle, can you speak up? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next item is business item number two subdivision final plat approval for Gateway Industrial Park subdivision number two in an IL light industrial zone district at 1019 North 39th Street into 14 industrial lots on 8.62 acres. Um, for Kent Brown representing Moving Forward Properties, LLC. And Parker, are you there? I am here. You need to get a big tall dunce hat or something so we can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't my head big enough? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah. It's not about us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Commissioners. The action requested from you this evening is the approval or denial of the Gateway Industrial Park Number Two, uh, located west of North 39th Street and north of Gary Boulevard. It is located inside the city limits and is zoned IL. Uh, it is bordered on the north, east, and west by IL zoned properties, as well as RS6 to the south and BC to the east. In November 2017, the preliminary plat was approved by the commission. In September of 2019, a previous version of the final plat for number two was approved. Uh, but January this year, the final plat was withdrawn. Um, that plat has been revised and resubmitted to you today. Uh, the development proposes 14 buildable lots and zero common lots on 8.62 acres. The finding of facts in this case are that it is located within city limits in the zoned IL. It conforms to the approved preliminary plat layout and it conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards for the city of Nampa. Uh, staff feels that it's appropriate for the commission to recommend approval of the final plat for the Gateway Industrial Park Number Two to City Council with the conditions as listed in the staff report and any other conditions that you would uh, like to add to that. And I will stand for any questions. Any questions of staff? Hearing none. There's no questions, <clears throat> Mr. Vice Chair. I'll make a motion on this also to recommend approval of the final plat for Gateway Industrial Park Subdivision Number Two in an IL zoning district at 1019 North 39th Street into 40 or 40 into 14 industrial lots on 8.62 acres for Kent Brown representing moving forward properties LLC with all conditions of staff and the conclusions of law stated all second thank you having been motion made and seconded all those in favor aye, aye. all those opposed aye. I heard Michelle say aye so we're good there Okay, moving right along, the next item is business item number three, subdivision final plat approval for Black Butte Business Park number three, phase one, in an IL light industrial zoning district at 11.65 acre portion of 3400 block of Black Butte Court into 14 industrial lots and two common lots. Uh, in the Midway subdivision. Um, This is south of the interstate, interstate less ramp. That doesn't make right right away. It's right south of the interstate, off the run, off the ramp of the right of way. Also known as a portion of county parcel, so on two four four one three, with lots of zeros. Located east of Midland Road and south of I eighty four for Kurt Smith, representing Don Birch. Christy Watkins. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chair and Commissioners. Um, the action requested from you this evening is the approval or denial of the Black Butte Business Park Subdivision Number 3, Phase 1, located east of Middleton Road and south of I-84. 
It is located inside the city limits and is zoned IL. It's bordered on the north by BC zoned property on the other side of the freeway. There is vacant Canyon County property to the east across the freeway. And on the south and east, it's bordered by IL zone properties that are future phases of this proposed subdivision. Between April of 2009 and July of 2019, there were various applications on this property for annexation and zoning to IL, development agreements and development agreement modifications, and RV parks. Ultimately, the RV park conditional use permit and the development agreement for the RV park expired. In October of 2020, the preliminary plat for the Black Butte Business Park number three was approved by planning and zoning. The development proposes 14 buildable lots and two common lots. One of those common lots is for drainage and the other is for the road. All of this is on 11.65 acres. So the findings in this case are that it is located within the city limits and zoned IL. It conforms to the approved preliminary plat layout and it conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards for NAMPA. Uh, staff feels that it is appropriate for the commission to recommend approval of the final plat for the Black Butte Business Park subdivision number three, phase one, to city council with the conditions listed in the staff report and any others you see fit to impose tonight. I will stand for any questions. Any questions, staff? Yeah, Christy, does this sit in a floodplain? I can't remember if that floodplain runs right through I think there. that was the one further on down on the other side of. Uh, mm. If you it know, had the I, RV park, I think it did. Yeah. The if RV we had the park. Whole conversation about mooring the right. RVs. Yeah, the so RV there's park a, does. There's a portion of it, and I think that's probably the part that they have scheduled for drainage. That, as a common lot? I, I think so. Okay. If I remember correctly, it was the southernmost part of the lot, and there was the, I think there was a canal that ran by there. Yeah. And so I think that if, if I saw that, I couldn't see it very good, but I thought. I was looking through here, too, to see if I could see it. But. Um, so if you look at this. You'll see that there's um, some FEMA zone AE lines and a FEMA zone A here. So those would be the floodplain lines. And then this area right in here, which is lot 14 for drainage, is the floodway. So yes, you're correct. Part of it does sit in the floodway. Paul, quick, Diane. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve subdivision plat final approval for Black Butte Business Park number three, phase one, in an IL zoning district, 11.65 acres, portion of the 3400 North Black Butte Court, into 14 industrial lots, two common lots, um, for Kurt Smith representing Don Birch, with all conditions of staff and conclusions of law. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Okay, business item number four looks like it's an extension from this year till next year, March 10th, 2021 to March 10th, 2022, for the final plat approval for Broadmoor RV Park in a light industrial zoning district at Zero Shannon Drive for 155 RV spaces on 11.72 acres. Allow time for FEMA to approve the conditional letter of map revision for the floodplain map. That's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> okay, um, so that has been. Proposed to be changed. We don't have to vote on that, do we? Yes, you do. Somebody make the motion then? We make the, I don't, Chris, I can't tell if you're gonna say anything or not. So I, I, don't, I, I, I don't need to. I didn't to want to interrupt you. <laughs> unless you want me to. No, just a question. So would the, it, if the extension is approved, is it, is it an extension from March 10th or an extension from today? Um, it's an extension from the day that you approve it. So from today. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make a motion that we <clears throat> approve 
Oh, no, we're just looking for an ext one year extension. Yeah. Well, you approve an extension. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the extension from March 23rd. Yes. From uh, to March 23rd of 2022 for the final site plan approval for Broadmoor RV, RV Park and an IL zoning district at Zero Shannon Drive for 155 RV spaces on 11.72 acres to allow time for FEMA to approve the conditional letter of map revision for the floodplain map for Broad, Broadmoor RV Park LLC and Danny Pruitt. Second. Motion was made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, it's uh, about seven minutes or so before we begin the public hearing process at seven o'clock. And for the gentleman that just walked in minutes ago, if you're here for item number two. Hearing number two. Hearing number two. One, okay. And we'll wait a few minutes and we'll get started on that. I hope one year is enough for the federal government to get their act together. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just did that with them on those part, those fourplexes that we built. I was How over eight months trying to get eight months. Well, they'll be they'll be answer. cutting it close with twelve months then. And then they and then they tell me that they didn't get the docs, and I'm like.
Item number two has been withdrawn, so we will not be hearing Mercy Creek subdivision number two tonight, if anybody is here for that. Guess not. Okay. First item, public hearing item number one is subdivision plat preliminary approval for Henry's Place subdivision for eight single-family homes, lots, and three common lots on 2.52 acres at uh, 406 West Dooley Lane. And single-family residential zoning district and a portion of land located on the southwest quarter of northeast quarter of section four in Epic County County for Mason and Associates representing J. Keene Enterprises LLC. And you are here. William Mason with Mason and Associates. Our address is 924 Third Street South in Nampa. Thank you, sir. So tonight we're asking you to uh, approve the Henry's Place preliminary plat. It's 2.52 acres on the corner of Dooley Lane and Canyon Street. Uh, there's uh, eight lots, three common lots. All three common lots um, are to be landscaped. The access will be taken off of Canyon Street. Currently, there's an existing house there. It will also change to have access off of Canyon Street, so it'll be removed from Dooley right now. It, it fronts Dooley. And we have no conditions with the uh, city's uh, recommended approvals, okay. uh, conditions of approval. I guess there is a concern. There's some areas where there's questions about the acreage. The fire department uh, discusses different acreage than what you're actually noticed for, but that's not including the roadway. Okay. Oh, so, so they... So he's including in his discussion, the buildable area okay. and common lots. You dealing with rent over there? Yes. Okay. okay. Anything else? Nope. Thank you very much, sir. And we have Mr. Critchfield. Yes, uh, yeah, Vice Chair Kehoe, Doug Critchfield. Um, so uh, this evening, the requested action is for a preliminary plat, proposed single-family subdivision with eight residential and three common lots on 2.52 acres at 0 and 406 West Dooley Lane. Uh, this is a, a, a picture of the preliminary plat. I have uh, taken this and zoomed it a little closer so you can see the size of the lots. Um, you can see that the lot range is anywhere between 7,647 up to 10,097. Uh, and um, there are eight lots. Uh, the original plat that was shown when the application came through was a, a cul-de-sac. This is a hammerhead, same type of effect uh, in order to be able to turn a fire truck around. Um, the history on this site, uh, annexation and zoning to RS6 was approved by the Napa City Council on August 3rd. A condition was placed on the development requiring that the building lots be no less than 6,000 square feet. Uh, the current zoning on the property, it's under uh, currently under City of Napa jurisdiction. Um, it's surrounded by RS6, uh, with exception to the east, which is uh, Canyon County Residential. The Bay Hill subdivisions to the north and to the west, and to the south is the Wycliffe subdivision. This is an aerial view of the property. Um, the, the Bay Hill lots are anywhere from uh, half to uh, or about a half an acre on average, whereas the Wycliffe developments more uh, in the seven and 8,000 square foot lot size. And this is a bird's eye view of the property looking from the south northward. Uh, the uh, fire information and emergency response time, the fire uh, station number two is about a, one and a half miles from the uh, site. It's about a response time of about three minutes. Um, and uh, this uh, the subdivision will add about 24 roughly residents um, and the increased personnel demand is going to be 0 0.024 uh, firefighter positions. We did not receive a response from the Nampa Police Department. Um, the uh, site characteristics, the access will be from uh, Canyon Street to the north. Uh, it's classified as a local road and Dooley is classified as a collector. Uh, utilities are at the site and they're available to service the site. The... Uh, uh, applicable regulations in making the determination uh, for the commission this evening is determine whether the plat is acceptable. 
the project will divide the land and according to state law in Napa City Code Title 10, Chapter 27, 8 and 33, and engineering design specification manuals is the basis for the decision this evening. Uh, the property was enclaved prior to annexation and zoning. So uh, in chapter 27 of title 10, it talks about uh, uh, the fact that this will qualify for an infill status, meaning uh, that it, it wasn't an enclaved area. Uh, it has uh, service utilities from the city and um, it would be no or low impact to the abutting or adjoining streets. Uh, so in our opinion, the staff's opinion, the project complies with those requirements and qualifies as a residential infill subdivision. Um, the reason that this is important uh, goes on to say in the chapter um, that uh, because of that status, the building lot sizes can be below normal minimum required uh, for that subdivision, uh, which means that this could be a technically 4,000 square foot lot subdivision. However, with the uh, minimum 6,000 uh, condition that was laid uh, on the project. Um, th that project uh, is uh, going to be uh, based on that 6,000 minimum square foot lot size. Uh, also, in addition to that, uh, the dwelling units need to comply with parking requirements of the RS6 zone and uh, all the setback requirements that are stated in that uh, chapter as well. So in terms of the staff analysis on this site, um, the overall site area is 2.76 acres. The total lot count is 11, three being common and eight being detached single family residential lots. Um, the uh, density uh, minimum or the maximum net density is 7.26 dwelling units per acre. The proposed is 5.06, so that checks out. Um, uh, the smallest proposed lot is 7647 square feet, so that checks. And then in terms of the width, the depth, and the frontage, um, all of the lots exceed those, uh, those minimums in that mean property depth. Um, there is no, uh, because it's a residential and field development, there are no uh, periphery requirements in terms of lot size or minimum lot size average. Uh, landscape was reviewed and approved. Uh, there's a minor planting detail that needs to be corrected, but uh, for the most part, it meets the uh, provisions of Title 10 and Chapter 33 and that it's consistent with the concept plan that was originally presented. We did receive uh, some correspondence on this, which is in your staff report. Um, so if there are any of the correspondence comments, I'd be glad to address those. Um, yeah. So I will show those on the screen. Um, and there are various comments from engineering and uh, Napa Fire and other agencies. Um, the conditions of approval are also in your staff report. Um, again, I'd be glad to address any of these if, they're, uh, if, if you'd like to discuss any of these conditions of approval. Um, they are based on the, um, what we received from the agencies. And if there are any other conditions that the uh, commission wishes to impose this evening, um, and uh, those can be added as conditions of approval. So with that, uh, I'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for staff? No. Okay. I, I mean, I do have one, but it's probably directed at Adam. You want to wait till we hear from the public and then come back to you? Okay. All right. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this application? Anybody yes? I didn't mean to wake you up, sir. Oh, no, I was just, like I said, I heard about the application and the person in favor. My name is Don Christensen. Can I take my mask off? Yeah. Okay. My name is Don Christensen. I live at 311 South Island Drive in the Bay Hill subdivision. Um, I just had a few questions, and one of them was answered in terms of there were like four or five different numbers in the different applications related to the size of the project, and we're from 2.76 down to 1.82. So I was just concerned about who was looking at what size, uh, as well as uh, the concerns is, one of the concerns would be, you could show up the site plan. Okay, where the farmhouse is, originally it was gonna be part of the development, but according to this plot map, it's now outside of the development itself. 
Uh, and so the sidewalk that runs along Dooley stops there at lot six, but does not continue all the way to the end of the uh, property line. So there would become some concern. The school district wanted, had mentioned they would want sidewalks all the way along, uh, but would that be included as part of this development all the way to the end of the property line? Uh, and how do they <coughs> intend to block off the access to Dooley and Lane from the farmhouse okay. if will. it's actually part of, of the development or not part? We'll ask the FF to get finished. Okay. Because considering they're using the, the uh, access roads for the development, considering it to be outside of the development to me is, is kind of a challenge, especially when they're changing the access to Dooley off that property line. How, I'm not sure if they have to ask for a variance related to the farmhouse being that close to the road. Uh, the other question I had is the city had said that they wouldn't be paving that until the city paves the right of way. So if you look at uh, Bay Hill, it's paved all the way to the right for that extra turn lane. Is that the same kind of setup for how the road's going to look when this development is done? You're talking about the street. The You're street. Dooley. Yeah, and Dooley. Uh, when you go there, is, is it going to be widened right at that spot uh, where the farmhouse is or farther down where the sidewalk would be in yeah. terms of the 40-foot uh, right-of-way? It's rather unclear on the plat okay. what that would look like. I'm writing notes down to ask that. Okay. All right. And then on the, if you could, uh, it's hard to overlay it, the exit uh, going out the north side there to Canyon Street. Mm -hmm. Canyon Street has a 90-degree turn maybe 50, 60 feet from where that entrance is, and it's kind of a blind corner. Uh, so my concern would be safety. Currently, for uh, residents that are dry using Canyon for their exit, as well as in the 20-year plan, the city plans to open Canyon Street all the way through, and the additional traffic there could create uh, some real conflicts uh, with that alignment. So we don't necessarily know how it could be fixed, but... Uh, it's just a point that if we deal with it now, we might prevent some problems in the future. Is there a house across on Canyon? Yes. Is it a, is Part it of Bay Hill. Yeah, it's Bay Hill. There's, Bay Hill, sorry. Yeah, there's, there's a, a, a berm uh, on that side of the road uh, that could cause yeah. some right there on that corner. Okay. Uh, so not sure. It's hard to visualize it without knowing exactly where that exit would be. So your concern is that is that road too close to that 90 degree elbow, or right. is it? Yeah, where that, it, where that exit it comes down out. A bit and we don't have. Uh, can you see? You know, there's yeah. no overlay that I could find yeah. that would tell me that. And so it's just a big, a rather large safety concern as to how that might be realigned. Um, okay. Bale does own the property just to the west of that, and whether or not they would consider having an exit out to the west side of their property line uh, versus the north side. That would change the layout of their of their plat. Yeah, but they need but to be kind of close to Dooley too, wouldn't you? Well, it would depend on where that is. It's, uh, yeah, but it's a turn versus the road. Right, and you have a better line of sight too. Right. So I'm, it's just it's a major concern for us, just in terms of that potential safety issue currently, and then in the future if there's a lot more traffic on that road, especially given the 200 houses being built over off of Greenhurst and Middleton and Midland. And those routes are all trying to get to 12th. Trying to get the fastest way out. Yep. So uh, let's see if there's other. Uh, that's about it from my standpoint. I just yeah. wanted to ask, ask those well. questions and we'll get some answers for all you. Right, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? I think that was actually a little bit, you more opposed to it than you were in favor of it, though, right? Okay. Anyone else want to speak for the, app the application, against the application, or undecided? Doug, we would like to hear from you. What, do you know any of those answers, or do we get stymied because we don't have engineering here tonight? Yeah, uh, yes, we have uh, Vice Chair Kehoe. We have Caleb LeClaire's online. He's oh, with okay. engineering. So um, uh, I'll just uh, answer the question about the the variance, the farmhouse is existing, so there's no variance required for that. Um, Speaking of the devil. 
Yeah, but in terms of the questions about the sidewalk and the paving, I'd be glad to um, ask Caleb to answer that. Okay. It's Caleb LeClaire, Assistant City Engineer, Nampa. You guys can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, so my understanding of uh, why that piece was able to be left out with the existing house is because when the property was annexed, it's allowed a lot split, uh, one-time administrative lot split. And I believe that's what was exercised. Um, and Doug uh, can probably help uh, clarify that, but I, my understanding is that was what was exercised, was a lot split to split off that existing house parcel. Uh, to be its its own parcel. Um, that way, when they came in with the subdivision plat, it then excluded that uh, already created uh, parcel. As a result, um, you know we are only able to <clears throat> um, require frontage improvements as a result of the uh, the plat um, area or, you know, the, the area that is subject to the plat. Um, so that's why that sidewalk is not is shown to not go across that uh, existing house lot. Caleb, this is, this is Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. So the drive, the access to that corner lot, the farmhouse lot that's been, that was divided off. Yeah. Goes to a lane court, which is part of the subdivision in question, correct? Sure. So the driveway part of that, is that part of the subdivision or has that access drive been subdivided off from the property? Well, new access will be provided from the subdivision to that house. Uh, part of that is a safety thing is, um, you know, we don't want access to come off of Dooley anymore. Um, so that is a desirable situation. Um, so, so the new access will come from the lane court. Um, but however, it's technically not a part of the subdivision because again, the lot is, is created in its own right. So I don't know if that answered your question or not. I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, okay, okay, this is Doug Critchfield. Um, Vice Chair Kehoe, if I could uh, chime in here. Yeah. Um, so, so this was originally two lots that has been created into, made into one subdivision. So this, the farmhouse lot is the, the second lot that essentially, so it's like a large lot line adjustment, if you will. So. Okay, so they did a lot line adjustment. Thank yes. you, Doug. Yeah, so it wasn't yeah. a lot split, it was a lot line adjustment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So then, Caleb, are you saying that they will not be a sidewalk in front of the house? City's not going to pay for it either. We, it would get created. So sidewalk would occur or would be constructed there if the lot ever redeveloped, or if the city came through with a uh, project uh, to widen Dooley Lane, we would then complete the sidewalk. But um, you know, by virtue of our city code. Um, development is only required to do frontage improvements across the area that is directly fronting the subdivision boundary. So, so that's why we're in a little bit of a, yeah. a you know, unique situation here. Unique is probably the wrong word, but it's just, it's more of a technicality thing based on our code. It was a variance issued for the house, the farmhouse being so close to the road, or is it not matter since it was there first? Because it's existing, it's grandfathered in. Right. If they ever redeveloped again, then, you know, tore the house down, put something back, right. the new construction would have to follow current codes. And the sidewalk would go in then too. Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, it would be done with the building permit. Did I answer, did we answer all your questions, sir? No, uh, Commissioner, they were going to, we wanted to ask Caleb possibly about the, the entrance to the subdivision being oh, close to the sideline, yes. Turn there on. Were you catching that, Caleb, about the entrance uh, coming out there and the field of vision isn't very wide? I I did I did catch that. Um, being from home, I, I didn't. I'm trying to pull up our 
GIS data, so I could have given a more educated answer on that. Um, so I don't know if there are, is it something that I can circle back to? I use the word term circle back, <laughs> but uh, is it something that I can come back to after I've had a little bit of time to look a little closer at that? Caleb. If there's more uh, public hearing folks who need to speak. Caleb, this is Jeff. Maybe just, uh, so that's a 90 degree elbow. Is, do you know if there's a certain um, required distance from, for an entrance so what, you know, from, from yeah. a turn like that? Sure, sure. So, so Canyon Street's a local road. Um, Canyon Street will likely never, ever continue to the north. So the way it's constructed now going up into the Bay Hill subdivision is, is likely the extent of um, how it will um, function. Um, being a local road, it, the speed limit's only 20 miles per hour. Um, so in that case, your sight distance lines are not significant. Um, I want to say that your sight distance is uh, around 100 to 150 feet. Um, so really, the only concern would be with that sharp corner, um, we, we would look at from like a fencing standpoint to make sure that there's proper sight distance for somebody coming around the corner um, that, that you could see uh, to be able to safely pull out of that uh, access uh, with enough time. Um, I don't see really any concern about access or about sight distance uh, to the uh, east uh, where it's making a 90 degree turn to the to the north there. Um, really there, the only restriction on sight distance would be any vegetation or, or landscaping that's at that corner. Um, we can certainly look at that and we'll look at that a little closer when we get to a, a final platting and construction drawing stage. Um, uh, but just by my quick glance at it, it doesn't appear that that would be an issue. Certainly the safest thing is, is trying to get the access as far to the east as possible. And I think they've uh, done their best to try to achieve that. Okay. Caleb, this is uh, Commissioner Garner. Um, in terms of division triangle, that that is something that's has to be done by code, right? They have to have that accounted for in their drawings. Is it a 40 foot the, triangle? Correct. Yep. At their access, they will have to meet the vision triangle requirements. And code yes. determines what can be inside of that triangle, right? No trees. It has to be low shrubs, all that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Between, I think it's a two foot height to a nine foot height has to be clear um, uh, for that, for that area. So those plans will have to comply before a permit's ever issued to build? Yes, sir. Thank yep. you. There was uh, Commissioner... Vice Chair Keel, there was a question, I believe, about Dooley and the access. Was there a turn lane on Dooley that was going to be extended to in front of this? Was that my mis Okay. I think what he was, um, Commissioner Kirkman, I think what he was talking about is if you were coming um, westbound on Dooley, on the right-hand side, is the pavement going to go all the way to the sidewalks, I think is what right. he was asking, so that, they, in effect, it would be a turn lane so they could get out of traffic and turn onto Canyon or whatever. And so, Caleb, right. can you speak to that? Is, that? is that the case? So, no. With the way city code is written right now, uh, development is not required to fully widen the road across their project frontage. Um, unless it is warranted by virtue of a traffic impact study that indicates a turn lane or such is, is necessary. Um, the reason for our code being written that way is the result of the increased development impact fees, uh, in particular our streets impact fee that went up um, a couple, uh, a year and a half or so ago. Um, so in this case, the project is not required to fully widen the road uh, across their frontage um, that would happen 
if and when the city uh, found it was warranted to widen Dooley Lane. And we then did that as a city project, in which case we would use some of the traffic impact funds or uh, streets impact fees um, to help fund that project. So I guess the condition then will be that there will be the asphalt on Dooley, then there'll be a basically gravel over to the sidewalk. Is that what we'll end up with? There'll be a drainage ditch between the road and the sidewalk. Uh, so a typical borrow ditch. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but effectively, yes, it would okay. be, you know, gravel down to the borrow ditch and then uh, whatever the, the uh, development chooses to put on the other side leading up to the sidewalk. Typically, they'll put turf or more gravel. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, Tom? No, nope, I'm good. Anyone else in the audience have any comments? Mr. Mason, do you want to respond to anything? Unless you have questions. No, I think you covered everything, and then we covered everything they asked about, so you're going to pay the road in gold or something. I <laughs> Got it. Um, okay, so. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Second. Second. Motion made. We close the public hearing and second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Michelle? Aye. Okay, thank you. The motion carries. And for those of you that, I don't think anybody just came in, item number two on the agenda has been withdrawn. So if anybody's here for the Mercy Creek subdivision number two, it will not be heard tonight. Anything else? Okay, moving on to item number three. Uh, we haven't made a motion yet. Oh, we, didn't we? No. We just closed, closed public <laughs> hearing. <laughs> about. Okay, so I thought we'd... All right, never mind. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and make the motion. Why don't you go ahead and make the motion? All right. Um, I like this project. I, I think it's a good infill project right here, and it meets the, you know, the surrounding neighborhood. I wish we could have a sidewalk that goes all the way, so maybe. <laughs> but I'll move to approve the preliminary plat for Henry's Place subdivision on 2.52 acre site located at 406 West Dooley Lane in an RS6 zoning district. Um, the applicant, I'm sorry, Mr. Mason. Yes. The applicant, Mr. Mason, I don't have the rest here. With all conditions of staffing, conclusions of law. I'll second that. Motion is made to approve the application and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you, Mr. Mason. Thank you. And as I mentioned about seven times already, public hearing item number two has been withdrawn, so we're moving on to public, uh, public hearing item number three. Development agreement modification originally recorded on ordinance number 3997, modifying the concept plan and allowing light industrial and commercial use and zoning map amendment from GBI, GB1 to IP Industrial Park for the Fuller 84 Business Park, located in the northeast west corner of Star Road and Franklin Road intersection. Um, Bow River Capital representing Franklin Star Development. Good evening, Vice Chair Kehoe, Commissioners. My name is Jeff Bauer. I'm a land use attorney with Givens Pursley, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Bow River Capital. Also with me from Bow River Capital, um, the development group, we got uh, Drew Lacey and Joe Ostmeyer. If there are any nitty gritty development questions I can't answer, they're here to answer those. Um, before we get going, I, want to do, I do want to thank planning staff, uh, as well as engineering staff for their help on the project. We have reviewed the staff report as well as all the proposed conditions of approval. We're in agreement with all of those conditions as well as staff's analysis and characterizations. All right, a little bit about Bow River Capital. Um, Bow River Capital is out of Denver, Colorado. This is their first project in the city of Nampa, but they've successfully developed uh, industrial, multifamily, residential, and commercial all over the Mountain West. On the screen, you're looking at a few of their recent industrial projects in Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. 
Here's another uh, recent project they did in Thornton, Colorado. On the left is a uh, virtual rendering, and on the right is uh, the final product. I'm, I'm showing you this one specifically because we're going to bring this architect to this site, and we envision a, a very, very similar product to this um, on, the, on the property via these applications tonight. We have two applications before you tonight. The first is a rezone, and the second is a development agreement modification. The property at issue here, you're probably all very familiar with. It's 62 acres on the northwest corner of Franklin Road and Star Road. We got the comprehensive map on the right-hand side there. The property is designated as community mixed use, and the current zoning is GB1, Gateway Business 1. Tonight, uh, we're requesting a rezone from that GB1 zoning to the city's industrial park IP zone. And, and the reason for our request tonight is to facilitate a greater scope of allowed commercial and industrial uses. The concept behind the Fuller 84 project is to develop turnkey industrial and light industrial space. We've been working with brokers, local brokers, as well as local business people to decide what the market needs right now. And based on our market research, we've determined that the rezone is really necessary for the site to allow the uses and the product type that the market's demanding. Those are more light industrial manufacturing based. Um, and again, our, our rezone is specifically intended to attract those type of users and, and we believe we'll be able to do so more, uh, more easily with the rezone as opposed to the GB1 zoning. Um, flexibility in uses from that IP zone, which again, just as a general characterization, IP zone is going to allow more of that light manufacturing use, whereas the GB1 is more retail and commercial based. Um, so we want that flexibility from the IP zone uh, to move forward with the project to really justify the, the, the financial investment that Bow River is going to make in this project. They anticipate spending approximately $100 million to build out close to 900,000 square feet of this light industrial space. Um, over the course of a couple years to, to develop out the property. And, and to make that investment, we just need to know that the uses are going to be allowed when those tenants come. Um, in this case, you know, notably the comprehensive plan does support the rezone. IP is an appropriate zone for land that's designated community mixed use on your guys' uh, matrix, uh, allowed zoning matrix. And, and again, importantly, we think the IP zoning in this case is compatible with our surroundings. To the south, you have the, the Project Bronco, Amazon's regional um, fulfillment center. To the east, uh, you got Sorrento Lactalis's cheese processing facility. And then to the north, a, a mix of, of industrial and commercial uses. All of these are pretty large uses, so we think we'll fit in pretty well with the surroundings. We also think we'll further the comprehensive plan uh, by increasing employment opportunities and advancing economic development. Turning to the second application, if there aren't any questions on the rezone, I'll, I'll go right into the development agreement mod. Any questions? Okay. So development agreement mod's pretty straightforward. Um, in 2011, the, a developer came through the city, zoned the property GB1, got a development agreement in place with a conceptual site plan that had more retail uses, restaurants, a motel, um, a lot of office. And based on the industrial surrounding the Amazon in particular, we don't think that that concept plan is, is viable on the site anymore. And it certainly doesn't support the Fuller project we're trying to bring. So the DA mod, we aren't proposing any real changes to the development agreement except to remove that uh, conceptual site plan from 10 years ago, back in 2011. Um, staff has recommended that the DA that we're proposing have to have two additional basically conditions on development that uh, weren't in the weren't in the draft we provided. First, they want the GB1 uh, design design standard, so design review to apply. Uh, second, they want the GB1 landscaping and setback standards to apply. We're amenable to that. We think uh, based on the improvements that Amazon's made on the Franklin frontage, we want to be compatible. 
So again, those conditions are, are acceptable to us as well. And in conclusion, you know, we, we believe this is the right, uh, right time and the right location for this project. We think it's gonna be a valuable asset to the city and attract new businesses uh, with this turnkey model, which is a very popular model. And we also wanna capitalize, and I know the city does, on, on the Amazon site here to, to provide some supporting services, e-commerce, logistics, those type of things. And that's all I have for you tonight, and we'll stand. You mentioned this was your first venture in Nampa. Is it your first venture in Idaho? Vice Chair Kehoe, that's correct. Welcome to Idaho. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds I'm like just, a good plan to me. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And we have Mr. Parker again. Let me just change presentations here. We noticed you uh, you didn't bring that back right away. <laughs> I don't want to be accused of stealing. That's right. Uh, thank you, Chairman and Commissioners. The action requested from you, to, from you tonight is the approval or denial of um, the recommendation of approval or denial of zoning map amendment from GB1 to IP Industrial Park for Fuller 84 Business Park with the modification of the development agreement. The property is located inside city limits and is zoned GB1. The lot totals 61.62 acres and is surrounded by GB1 to the north, Canyon County zone property to the east, GB1 to the south, and GB1 to the west. In July of 2008, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended denial of annexation and zoning to GB1 because it was not in the city's interest at the time. In October of 2008, City Council remanded that uh, the annexation back to Planning and Zoning Commission and no action was taken at that point. Uh, in October of 2011, the Commission uh, recommended approval of annexation with the development agreement um, that is on there currently. And in November of 2011, City Council approved the annexation with that development agreement. The future land use map designates the project area as community mixed use and the IP zoning fits within that designation. All utilities and services are available. There are three traffic signals that are, were placed as part of Amazon that will need to be moved to their ultimate location. Uh, these were unable to be placed in, the, in that location previously because of the in inability to get the right of way dedication from the the owner of the property. Uh, so regarding the requested IP industrial park zone, a large variety of uses are permitted. Uh, if you wish to narrow that list of uses, you can add that condition to the, uh, the development agreement, the, add those in the conditions of approval. Uh, in 1018, it states the IP zone is intended to create, preserve, and enhance areas containing manufacturing and related establishments with limited external impact with an open and attractive setting, typically appropriate to locations near major thoroughfares, freeways, and non-manufacturing areas. Uh, further, 1018 uh, gives uh, restrictions on the, in the IP zone. So in 1018-2, uh, it states that some uses would require a CUP if they're uh, if their uh, presence would create some kind of nuisance, either by sight, smell, or sound. 10186B uh, <clears throat> requires that the building, the buildable area of the lot not to exceed 60%. So that um, requires 40% open space. 10187 uh, requires that exterior storage be behind the building and be screened. 101812A requires that the operation of the businesses be entirely indoors. Parker? I yes. apologize for interrupting, but just back on the property 10186.B. Yes. Does that 40% open space, does that include um, uh, 
parking lot? Yes. So the 60% is for the buildable um, portion structures. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding rezone, uh, 1023 states that the required conclusions of law that the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission must find and conclude for approval. Uh, it must be in harmony with the comprehensive plan. The use or uses would be compatible with adjoining uses. The zoning is compatible with adjoining zones, would not create a spot zone, and would be in the interest of the public. Uh, regarding the development agreement, so the current development agreement encompasses the entire lot. It includes a, con a concept plan and landscape plan, which would be removed. Uh, engineering has requested conditions be added, which are in the staff report, as well as planning and zoning department conditions, uh, which we can go over, and any conditions that you would wish to add to those, to the development agreement. So this is the current concept plan and the development agreement. And this is the landscape um, plan, in a sense. Um, it calls for a, uh, a berm to be placed uh, adjacent to Star Road. In the comprehensive plan, it describes community mixed use areas as developments that include commercial uses that provide community wide needs and uh, services. Uh, they should be along major transportation corridors and include public transportation access. Currently, the land is being used as ag land. The applicant is seeking a zone change because they want to avoid each tenant coming in uh, for conditional use permits in the GB1 zone. Um, the IP zone would allow for more uh, uses by, by right compared to the GB1 zone. Um, a traffic impact study uh, as well as frontage improve, improvements will be required. We receive correspondence from engineering, which we can go over if requested. Um, it's quite extensive, but highlights would be that uh, to move the, the traffic to Knowles on Franklin uh, Road, requiring uh, and requiring a traffic impact study. They requested conditions be added to the development uh, agreement, which were included in the are included in the recommended conditions. We also received a letter from Rodney Ashby, the Director of Planning and Zoning, uh, and it states, as requested by Mayor Kling and as envisioned in the Nampa Comprehensive Plan, East Franklin Road is a significant gateway corridor into our community. The GB zones were created to ensure these gateway corridors maintain a consistent feel and appearance as envisioned in the Comprehensive Plan. As such, if the Nampa City Council wishes to approve the rezone and development agreement modification for the full R84 business park, I recommend including the landscaping, berm setbacks, and uh, design review standards required for the GB zoning districts in the development agreement and that any structure uh, constructed on the property be required to go through design re review process as if it had remained in the GB zoning district. Uh, Nampa Building Department requires that they be subject to the uh, Title IV building re regulations. Uh, the conditions are those listed in the staff report, which I would be glad to go over if you uh, request it. It consists of the conditions re requested by engineering as well as the condition of for the GB zoning district standards to stay in place. So there are two motions to be made tonight. So this is the motion for the rezone with the conclusions of law that we covered earlier. And second would be the motion for the development agreement modification. And I will stand for any questions. I do have a question, Parker. <clears throat> so the traffic lights on Franklin, are you talking about the two lights in front of Amazon, the entrances to the Amazon building, Amazon property? Oh, they moved them. That uh, might I think, be a good I think they took out the roundabout, didn't they? They did. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let's get the roundabout and put in stoplights there. Is that no, the, there's, I think that's what the no, there's two more. There's, there's one two of the, lights. There's two stoplights in front of the Amazon property for entrance. Yeah, one's at the main entrance and one's at the tr truck and shipping and receiving. The intersection. It's the intersection. Oh, of Franklin and Star. Oh, Franklin and Star. Okay. 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 Yeah. So okay. that would that intersection, those lights would have to be reconfigured somehow is what you're saying. Um, and Caleb might be able to, or someone, so, <laughs> someone <laughs> can. An assistant engineer. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, so back when this one uh, was originally annexed, there was a bit of a conversation with the owner who was not willing to dedicate the right of way that was needed at that time. So the lights are currently placed in the right of way that exists. So there's a certain amount that's going to be dedicated with this project, and those lights will be moved to be put where they belong. They're, they're still you'll stay in the spots where they're at. They're just going to be. They're just going to be moved back. Okay. I was, I, oh, okay. I'm driving that, and I'm like, where are they moving those to? Yeah. Because so that right make now any they're sense. sitting right at the edge of the right of way yeah. line, okay. and that right of way will be widened. And then the so, dedication. So the poles and what the lights are okay attached to, not not moving up or down. Frankly. No. Okay. That, that, that's, that's, that's where I was that's, too. Yeah, I was that's like, where, where, was where are they going to go? Yeah, the poles will be repositioned at that corner. It'd be wider. Okay. I, I have another question. Yes. If 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 you guys don't mind, may I interrupt your question? Yeah, I'm done. Thanks. The new entrance to the interstate, is that still coming up? Um, so the and Highway Franklin. 16 yeah. mm -hmm. will be coming a little bit to the east of that. Right. So that intersection, that on-ramp is east on Franklin a little bit. It's not going to affect this location. No, but it would be helpful for this project. Well, it's another, down the road. It will impact this yeah. project. I don't yeah. know if helpful is It would give right them part. another way to get in and off rather than getting <laughs> off at Garrity. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's correct. The, that's what I'm asking. About. Yes, yes. Okay. It will help traffic. Yes. Ultimately, yes. I think that's a good thing. Okay. Thank you. You're I like welcome. the word impact better though, just being said. <laughs> Anything else, Jeff? Um, yeah, but I can't read my writing. <laughs> you want me to get your wife down standard. here? Oh, I think I was going to ask about the, the GB1 design and landscape standards. Um, the applicant had mentioned along the frontage of Franklin. My question is just that's going to go all the way around the property, and I think that was addressed when you were talking about. So it's going to be on Star Road also, those GB1 design standards. Yeah, it would encompass the whole, the whole, property, whole property, the whole perimeter. Okay. So, Parker, they, they will have to put a berm down Franklin as well as the one that's already there on Star? The berm is not required as part of the uh, landscape requirements. Oh, good, because um, it, it would look odd with... Because right across the street, Amazon's nice and flat and got all those trees. Yeah. I was like, you put a berm on the other side, really it kind of looks weird. So, so that's what I was hoping we wouldn't have to put a berm down, Franklin. They could kind of match what's across the street. It would be a lot more appealing driving in there. So. Okay. Parker, does the main entrance to the Fuller development correspond with the main entrance to Amazon? Uh, looking at the site plan, it kind of looks like it's it's back a ways from Star on Franklin. Is that correct, uh, Commissioner? It's the, the concept plan is for the previous development that never occurred. Um, this application hasn't presented any concept plan. Okay. So, thank you. But that would only make sense yeah. right, to use the existing stoplights. Um, oh, the Amazon um, property. Now that's that was that that falls under the GB one design review standards, correct? That was that was a, a GB one zone. So, that the Amazon did go through design review, okay. correct? So it could be so it could be the same compatibility with that property across the street. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't see. Well, to clarify, to clarify. <laughs> so thank you, commissioners. Um, so Chapter 34 applied to Amazon. Um, in Chapter 34, we do have a requirement for 25% glazing on their primary frontage. Planning and zoning waived that requirement for Amazon. They would have to come 
before you again if they wanted to appeal that on this project? Well, we don't know for sure what's going in. We don't. This project. So we don't, at that but point, those buildings then, will have to meet the standards for Chapter 34. Right. If they want to appeal any of those decisions, they'll have to come before okay. you. Are you talking about the, blade, the buildings or are you talking about the landscape? I was talking about the landscape because oh. you had mentioned the berm and how a berm might look a little bit off and all that. But the landscape design for a GB1 was the same as what the Amazon property had That's to go correct. through, too, as far as design review. That is correct. But yes. then it also, I mean, that brings up a good point. When the buildings at that time come before us for a review or a design review or whatever, if they want to have glazing or not glazing or whatever. We'll cross right. that bridge. When we we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> but yeah, the landscaping requirements would be the same. Okay, cool. As, but that's technically not a design review element. It's just part of our plan review process. Right. So that's what right. threw me off. Sorry. Okay. Oh, there you go. So I did <laughs> okay. throw you off. Well, that yeah. was my. That was my. Keep you on your toes. toes. <laughs> Keep you on your toes. Any okay. more questions of staff? I do, Parker. The, the the road sections that you showed in the presentation, with showing the berms. Are those part of that previous design thing, or are these applicable now? I think that would it's part of the current um, development agreement, but it wouldn't be taken out unless you would like to keep it. Yeah, that showed the berms, so. and it shows a berm on Franklin right there, right? No, just on Star. It would, the berm would just be on Star Road. What is that with the trees on it? That looks like it's humped up on Franklin. There's Franklin here. Yeah. So that's the existing. That's existing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start. Any other questions, or we move forward? Go ahead. I'm done. Okay. Thanks. Um, if I'm memory serves me correctly, we're finished with questions for staff, and now we're open to the public hearing process. Is there anyone here in favor of this application who would like to speak? Anyone opposed to this application who would like to speak? have one online that has a neutral, neither in favor nor opposed. Uh, Amanda Watson, are you online? I'm here, yep. Would you like to give us your opinion, please? Sure, thanks, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Uh, thanks for inviting me to provide comment remotely. My name is Amanda Watson. I represent Lax House American Group just immediately adjacent to the east of the property in question. Uh, the company just has a couple of questions that they have of the applicant. Um, I'm not sure if they can be answered today. I heard uh, the presentation. So some of these questions might be already answered um, from Jeff Bauer um, and others are under consideration, I think, in your discussion. But the questions that the company has are if the applicant has a business in mind already for attracting for the project and how many people the development will bring on a daily basis, including employees, visitors, transportation and deliveries. Um, I'm guessing you can understand where that's coming from. Um, Lactalis is supportive of the recommendation in the staff report to complete a traffic impact study. And then the expected operations of operation for the business, um, expected to operate the parcel or businesses, and then the timing of the beginning of construction and completion of the project. Those are the company's questions of the applicant. And as you mentioned, the company's neutral on the application just have some existing questions. You bet, we will ask the applicant. And if we don't know, we'll find out any other questions. Any other, anything else you want to ask? That's it, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Would you like to respond? Thank you, Vice Chair Kehoe, Jeff Bauer again, 601 West Bannock. I'll address Ms. Watson's questions first. Um, right now, we do not have any specific businesses or uses in mind. Again, the concept is uh, develop the space and then attract the users. We, um, as staff mentioned, will be conducting a traffic impact study. The way we have been working with city engineering to develop that study is to uh, forecast general uses, um, general light manufacturing, commercial uses to uh, determine what our traffic impacts will be, and then set thresholds for if we go over that, we'll study again. That way we make sure that we're fully mitigating our traffic impacts. Um, as to timing, 
we want to start as soon as possible. We're going to develop the site in two phases. The first phase uh, will be approximately half the site, um, the west side of the site. Um, and as soon as that's complete, we hope within one to two years, we'll start on phase two, which is the east side of the site. Along Star Road. Vice Chair, that's correct. Do you, I, I got a quick question for you. Do you have, I know you don't have it all laid out yet, but by chance, do you have any idea if you're going to have any entrance off of Star Road? Because that's a big problem with Lac Callis. There are trucks getting in and out right now. The Star Road's not going to get any slower, you know, less traffic. I'm just trying to think of, to help them out, if you didn't have any ex exits and entrances off a of star and brought them all off of Franklin with the lights, it might might help them with their getting their trucks in and out. Vice Chair Ke uh, Kehoe, Commissioner Turner, great thought. We're simply just not that far along yet. Phase one, as I mentioned, is the is the west side of the site, in which case we are only going to have the two access points at the current lights on Franklin Road. Um, so I can't speak to what the access points will be on star yet. I apologize. Not a problem. You mentioned that you had done some preliminary investigation of potential businesses that might want it. That's why you changed it from GB1 to, to the current zoning you're asking for. So those people you spoke to that mentioned they might be interested in that, how do they fit with what we're talking about? Are these applicants that have 35 employees or 3,500 employees? Vice Chair Kehoe. Tough question to answer, and I might have to invite Mr. Lacey up to answer that, but um, we will certainly have lesser impacts than our neighbors. We're sure about that. Um, and, and yeah, we're, we're just, again, gonna, gonna ballpark the uses when we do our traffic impact study. We're using the same engineering firm that, that did the Amazon study as well, so they're very familiar with, with the site and the infrastructure. Um, and, and we'll just have to see what the, what the study reveals. But again, we're looking for light manufacturing um, as well as commercial uses at this time. Will that traffic study include, um, it's probably more for staff, but heavy truck traffic? Uh, Vice Chair. Will it be, I mean, will it be forecasted for that type of traffic coming in there? Vice Chair Kehoe, uh, Commissioner Kirkman. Um, we will basically the way the traffic impact set study will be set up is we're going to forecast uses based on the modeling that we've done in our market research and the traffic engineer will will again decide what mitigation is necessary when we come before the city for our building permit again those traffic studies will be available to the city to study and decide whether the mitigation we've proposed is adequate um, uh, there will be some truck track truck traffic associated with these uses, I would expect. But as you mentioned, probably not as heavy as your neighbor to the south. That's correct. <laughs> well, even Lactus has lots of trucks bringing milk and whey and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of 18-wheelers driving down that road right now. Yes. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Answer. Anybody like to make a motion to close public hearing? I'll make a motion. We close public hearing. Second. Motion made to close public hearing and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are any opposed? Michelle. Michelle. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Let's say you, gentlemen. And, and, and this lady, Ms. Franklin. I think it's great. I mean, I was looking at the taxes, and it's not, we're not even collecting $1,800 taxes off that place. It's just sitting there being farmed. It's not, evidently, what they planned to, 10 years ago is not fitting into what's currently going on in Napa. So in order to bring some business there, we've got to make changes. The only thing I would like to see, though, is if we do approve it to go to the IL, that we do restrict it from... Uh, storage units, um, mobile home parks, any kind of residential. I don't want to see. I don't want to. I don't want to allow IL, and then all of a sudden we're going into a multifamily project on it. But. They're going IP, right? Yeah. That, that's going to be different than IL. 
Well, according to the permitted uses, it's, you can have. Well, see, that's what the staff was saying earlier, that if we wanted to um, put something in there restricting what they can go in, we could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're concerned about storage buildings or let's make part of the motion. That's a, that would be my, my concern. I, I just. Walker, how do you feel? Do you, do you, I mean, I don't know this company, but it seems like it's a very, uh, who knows? Do you have any concerns with those issues? Does the staff have any concern with those issues? Because isn't that, according to what I printed off, that those kind of things are permitted. And, yeah, uh, sometimes. Well, but isn't storage units now have to go through a CUP process anyways? Just for city council, I believe. Yeah. That's correct. It's also permitted. <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, correct. Planned unit development, um, mobile home parks. I, I'm just thinking back to an applicant we did a few months ago, and they were going to split it into a couple of multi or single family homes, and then all of a sudden they came back and wanted to throw duplexes on there, and we didn't restrict it at the time. So I just want to make sure if we allow it that if we change it to IL that there are some restrictions on what cannot go in there so that well that that's an option that you have if you want to restrict some of those items or am I or am I wrong Christy <laughs> you're getting your workout tonight, tonight. Uh, so thank you vice chairman Kehoe and uh, Commissioner Turner um, the list of uses that was submitted in your staff report, you guys are more than welcome to go through there. And in your motion, you can restrict, the, you can take out the ones that you wouldn't want to allow or that you want to recommend to city council to not allow. And then we can take that revised list of uses and we can make that an exhibit in the development agreement so that every time a new project comes forward, we can refer to that specific list of uses that you've said yes to. As far as storage units are concerned, this may be a, a list that hasn't been updated with that new code. Um, storage units are allowed in the BC and BN zones with a CUP that goes to city council, yeah. but they would not be allowed in this one. Okay, this is what just came with the packet the other day. So right. I was assuming yeah. it was in I, I think that's a new enough code that this list probably online hasn't been updated okay. yet. Okay, so do we want to go down the list or do you have an idea of what you would want and then Anybody has another idea, they can throw that in there. I mean, like art galleries, I mean, they, we've got plenty of those in Nampa now. We don't need any more, right? No. Um, no, I just like to restrict it from any sure. residential, make manufactured, that, home make, park. Make that as part of your motion, then. Land unit developments. Um, you know, and and they, I noticed there was another one on there. It was truck and bus parking lot. I just would hate to see that be a... Well, I'm a Parking lot for stuff that didn't move for petroleum storage. But I'd love to see something start happening there and get some more business. Would you like to make a motion? <sighs> sure. Can we pull up that? What was that motion? I don't have that one printed off. In your packet. Didn't bring the whole thing. <laughs> well, here. Oh, no, that I got. <laughs> okay, so we need to make the motion to change the zoning first, right? Correct. Okay. So I'd move to. We to approve the zoning amendment from GB1 to IP for the Fuller 84 Business Park located at the northwest corner of Star Road and East Franklin Road intersection for Bow River Capital representing Franklin Star Development LLC with all conditions of that. It's, it's a recommendation of a Yeah, a rec oh, it's I'm incorrect on here. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thanks, Parker. <laughs> So it's a recommendation um, with all conditions of staff, including the limitation of not allowing any planned unit development, uh, manufactured 
home parks, um, and truck and bus parking lot. Oh, and all, con all conditions of staff and conclusions of law. Can I just add that? Yeah, I was going to say, why don't, does anybody else want to add anything to that list? Yeah. I want to add, well, not necessarily to the list, but I want to make sure that we get um, Director Ashby's comment about GB1 landscaping. Uh, is that for the rezone? That's in the development the agreement. IP. Okay, I just want to make sure because it was a suggestion on his part. I just wanted to make sure that, or a recommendation on his part, so I want to make sure we get that in there. Yeah, I think that, that goes to the development agreement, right? It's part of the conditions and the staff okay. report. So is there anything you wanted to add to the list of what, uh, we can add see. petroleum storage. Yeah, I would. I don't oh, think seriously. I had that one marked, but I don't think the city. I don't think they'd allow that there. Dairy products processing. Well, and, and and when the when the applicant comes back to um, with building permits and things like that, a lot of that will have some stopgap, yeah. you know, considerations. And that also, but it doesn't hurt to add those to there. So I would add petroleum mm -hmm. storage. You've even got a zoo on here. Zoo might be nice. <laughs> okay, anything else? Want to add anything to it? Michelle, do you want to add anything to it? The list? No, I don't have nothing to add to the list. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Second. Case, I'll second the motion. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to step on you. <laughs> So the motion was made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, and the second motion for the what was the second one for development agreement? That was for the motion for the map amendment, right? This is for the development agreement. Yeah. Right. Okay. Correct. So. So, Christy, did I put those in the wrong spot? Should they be in the development agreement then and not in trust? Um, yeah, they, they really should be listed in the development agreement. You can make the same motion. Make the same motion again. Am I, approve, am I moving to approve this or recommend approval? Recommend approval. Recommend. Thank you. <laughs> I move to recommend the approval of the development agreement modification originally recorded. As ordinance number 3997, modifying the concept plan and allow light industrial and commercial uses for the Fuller 84 business park located at the northwest corner of Star Road and East Franklin intersection for Bow River Capital, representing Franklin Star Development, with all conditions of staff, including the limitation of not allowing planned unit developments, manufactured um, mobile home parks, petroleum storage, or truck and bus parking lot. The motion has been made. Anyone second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 There was nobody opposed. The motion passes. And that's it, folks. Thank you. Thank welcome. you guys. Welcome to Idaho again and welcome to Nampa. Welcome. <laughs> with that same